Hi, this is Chad Riggs. We're here on a Move to Kingsport tour. Nice to meet you guys. See you guys here. We got Bob Miller here with us today and our Move to Kingsport director, Kira Dykstra. Uh, we had a question about uh, some of the places to live in the area. Uh, we have uh, people moving here from all over the country, and one of the places, uh, we're showing them some of the places around the area that might be nice to live. We're going to where my stepmother, Dorothy, lives. Uh, this is on Bob's suggestion, Willowbrook. It's a community over here. Uh, really close to Meadowview where the tours start and uh, there's a pool and uh, there's condominiums and there's uh, well I guess what they call patio homes my stepmother lives in a four bedroom unit and it has uh, it's two levels four bedrooms and so you can do everything on the main floor and it's got uh, you know a second story upstairs with more bedrooms a lot of the bigger houses you see today they'll have a garage and stuff on Maine, but there's no bath on Maine. And that's always a concern, you know, if you're gonna live somewhere in the next 30, 40 years, it might be good to know, or if you have uh, parents yourself, you know, and you're looking to retire with parents nearby, that's a good thing to have in mind, you know, getting up and down stairs, or if you have to. Chad, is there an age requirement to live here, do you know? There's no age requirement, no. Yeah, you. Oh, yeah. Okay. In fact, in fact, I would recommend it as they have a pool. Ah. It's close to Base Mountain. It's close to Meadowview. I mean, even if you wanted to get it out of your house and rent, straight ahead here. You know, we'll it's pretty nice. It's yeah. a pool on the left. Well, so we're going to check out uh, Willowbrook. The grounds. Right. Oh yeah, this is my stepmother's house. Is the second one here, okay. and it, she doesn't mow or anything. Right. So that's what I'm these are like it's not right attached. Right to, yeah, this is where she lives. Mm -hmm. And that's one floor. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, it's two floors, but oh. it's just it's a huge storage room and two bedrooms and a little bath upstairs. Okay. But you could live all on that's Main. And there's floor. two. And there she has a little gas heater on the back with a patio room and a little mm -hmm. deck room to grill yeah. on the back. Right. So you mainly hang out on the inside tiled part. And the little gas heater is nice because she doesn't like the cold floor. And this was originally the city's water supply, very good quality water. However, in only a few years, it exceeded its capacity, and so now the water comes out of the Holston River. Um, I don't know what the size of the lake is. One time I've seen it frozen over, and some people walked across. I wouldn't do that. But uh, they have uh, a number of habitats up here for animals. They have a, a wolf habitat with about, I think, about six wolves. And the rangers can uh, get them to howl. They know how to do that. They have a raptor uh, habitat for owls, uh, falcons. Uh, I think they have a buzzard in there. All of these uh, birds are ones that have been in the, uh, who cannot survive in, the, uh, in nature. And so they're kept there. They have a uh, herbitarium. No, herp, I'm not sure. Anyway, they have snakes in there. And uh, and they have a deer habitat with about six or eight deer. I uh, have some raccoons. I have a river otter. They used to have ducks, but the ducks kept getting away, and they finally gave up on that. And uh, uh, great hiking trails up here. Some of them are steep, and some of them are relatively uh, flat. There's a very nice hike around the lake, about 2.3 miles. I have done it in 55 minutes, but I don't do it that fast anymore. Uh, it takes me about an hour and 15 minutes to go around. And uh, there's a little bit of hills on it. And if you want to get the hills at the start, you go across the dam that way and get the hills behind you while you're still fresh. Uh, lots of deer uh, loose up there. There have been some bears. I've never seen one up there, but they say they have some. Uh, and there are all sort of trails that you can go on. Some demanding and some of them fairly easy. Uh, Turkey Federation, I have uh -huh. to tell them. Yeah. I saw a scream walking by the side of the road. Yeah. This is Chad Riggs. We're about to discover what the world's most dangerous animal is. <laughs> We're here at Bays Mountain Park and Planetarium, eagerly anticipating the opening of the new planetarium, March 7th, 2009. 
going to look at some rocks here. We got your igneous, your sedimentary, your metamorphic, your metal ores, a lot of different rocks. Of course, sedimentary rocks being those that accumulate over time on the bottom of the ocean and uh, settle. Igneous rocks, I guess, are volcanic. Metamorphic. I don't know. I think those are ones that get formed by pressure. Is that, is that right? I don't know. I should have a card on this. We're here in the uh, large aquarium room at Bays Mountain Park and Planetarium. Here we see a variety of freshwater habitats from a creek to a stream to a river. See some large fish in here, smaller fish. Over to the side, we've got uh, the uh, bluegill, we've got uh, mosquito fish. These are cool. Uh, we have two pieces of artwork for our uh, planetarium theater. Um, one of which is the sign for the entrance and the Orion sculpture you see down there is um, for our foyer when you enter. Both of which were um, designed and drawn by uh, one of our park artists, Alan Davis, who's around here somewhere today. And uh, we're really excited about having that. Um, it's a great way to not only um, you know, let people know where the theater is and that we have one, but also that we are having uh, some neat um, public art. And so when they come to the theater, they're going to see more than just the show. They're going to see some cool artwork. Um, so it's a proud moment. It's just about to be installed. What I saw uh, once up here, uh, I know that Alan does a lot of the 3D elements, and I yes. saw like there was a deer in a yes. field in a meadow, and right. he has all these things to worry about in 3D with uh, collisions and deer antlers and trees and branches. There's a lot of things to see. Yes, the show is, uh, should be pretty exciting. We're still working on it right now, days before we open. <laughs> uh, so we we're trying to get things working. Um, it's all new technology, so it's, uh, it, it's a uh, trial and tribulation. The, um, uh, the show that we've produced is unusual in that it highlights what our park does, which is nature and astronomy education and environments, but it also highlights what the theater can do. It's new technology, so it's a whole um, mixture of all these great elements uh, for, our, for the public to see, and it does um, tie together um, nature, astronomy, environments, immersive environments, and uh, just having a lot of fun, too, with the program. Well, we're back inside the planetarium area with uh, the Move to Kingsport group. We see the new star projector and some of the elements of the full dome video. This is a real behind-the-scenes look. Now, the last time we were up here, this was pretty put together, but they've had to take some stuff out and away, like this uh, wall next to me with the video unit, to, to get all the elements in place to get ready for the March 7, 2009 opening. The equipment that you see, the star projector in the center, uh, is called the ZKP-4. Uh, it's just a model name, but it's the latest in um, medium-sized planetarium dome technology. Um, it uses technology from a much larger instrument they make called the Universarium, which is a star ball that is, I don't know, about four or five feet wide. And they use fiber optics where each the ends of each fiber optic are the star images that are then projected. So you get a much more intense brightness with the stars. So and actually it was almost too bright, so they lowered the lamp brightness. Um, and uh, about 7,000 stars are projected. Uh, you see how tiny it is. The old machine was seven feet long. Um, this is about four feet long. And um, it's a much better star field, much more technology or capabilities. I'm going to say it that way. Um, it's much more accurate. We have some new features that the old machine did not have, like azimuth control. The entire machine rotates. So instead of saying, uh, look to the north and it's behind you and everybody's craning their neck, um, we can just rotate the machine around and see north to the front. Um, so it makes it easy because you see how the seating is. It's unidirectional. Um, Before it was more in a 
Circa. Kind of. It was a chevron shape. Um, the the reason we went with this design is many reasons. One is we wanted to center the focus to the front. And you notice that our control desk is in the front now. It's not in the back. So even if we're seated at the controls, at the computers back there, you can still see us. But we don't have to be. We can be mobile. We can walk around to be next to you and just hit some keys or we have a little wireless device and run the show live sitting next to you if we wanted and uh, so it makes it much more interactive and personal uh, the other reason is um, the sound system is 5-1 surround sound which does require a certain direction for everybody to be in and uh, the quality of that sound um, you can't have seats just everywhere in fact the worst seat in the house is at the desk um, the sound is actually uh, doesn't work there because all the speakers and everything are focused to the audience that's where it should be um, we also have an added speaker a seventh speaker at the zenith so if the voice of God well I'm not going to say that but <laughs> the effect of if something is flying overhead we could have the sound follow that's really cool as opposed to just you know left to right or front and back it can actually go overhead oh that's true and um, the speakers are mounted behind the dome. And uh, um, so there's six speakers up there, and the seventh, the subwoofer, is back over here. Um, and uh, they've uh, just got the balance set. Um, we're still not fully operational with everything yet. There's still a lot of little things we need to do. Um, but um, everything is working good. The star field is stunning. The um, this is the video system. These five projectors here, as a unit, will fill the dome with a singular image, so to speak. So it surrounds you. I mean, you could, it doesn't mean you have to have an image everywhere, but if you wanted like a postcard or a photograph. You can just move it anywhere you want, and it just doesn't matter where it is. Yeah. We're not limited to just left, center, right, which is how most of the older theaters are. Um, so we're essentially limitless. Plus, it has the uh, capabilities of showing full dome video, which means that you're immersed in a singular environment that's moving. Um, and it also has a database that we can access that's 3D, where we can uh, live... Um, fly you through the solar system, the galaxy, or the universe. How, what's what kind of wattage, as far as light output, do you have to have for your optics? The star lamps that are in the star balls. Each star ball has a lamp. There are hundred watts. And then, what kind of wattage is your sound system? Well, that's a lot different. I mean, totally you know, well, I mean, a light, a lamp <laughs> wattage. It's it's like a hundred watt lamp that's inside there. The original the the earlier machine we had had 600 watt lamps in the north and the south. Oh, that's amazing! So it's a, a lot better. Brighter. And this is better. So, um, so there, it's not really energy savings that's important, but a lo the load on the system is is important. Yeah. Uh, the, are those incandescent or fluorescent bulbs? No, they're incandescent. Okay. The, everything is incandescent on the machine itself some uh, companies are using LEDs mm -hmm. but um, um, Zeiss still prefers to right. use incandescents and what, what material is the uh, dome? the dome is a perforated <coughs> aluminum aluminum? yes I thought it was fabric nope um, it looks like way because each panel has been formed to a curved surface right the original dome which we did replace were flat panels forced to a curved surface yeah, yeah. so you saw buckles right, and things right. here you notice where all the seams are they all steam together it's all smooth yeah. this system this type of technology if there have any errors in the dome you will see it yeah. um, the this dome it's clean it's just it's perfectly homogenous it's actually a 45 percent reflectivity of gray which means that you know, you don't want 100% reflectivity because even just showing an image over here will backscatter and you have light bouncing everywhere and you lose contrast. The darker 
your surface, the more contrast and the more color saturation you have. And it's balanced with the star lamp projection brightness. So together as a unit, it all works well. And it's all designed correctly as a complete unit. A way, a way people may be able to think about it is a TV from the 70s. When you turned it off, it looked kind of greenish gray. And now a TV, you know, uh, yes. you know, from a rear projection, it's much blacker. And that right. gives you the more contrast that it'll have. So it's pretty nice. Right. Um, so there's, there's this huge big picture planning with the planetarium theater the exact placement of where the machine is and where the seats are and where the speakers are and where and how the visuals are made and how they work together and how they work with the dome and even the cove height the edge of the cove is two inches below the edge of the dome itself if you look across you can see how the dome is actually a little higher usually it's the other way around but the reality is the dome is a perfect hemisphere this wants to this wants to project on a perfect hemisphere. If you have the edge too low, that means that you have to distort this image to push it up on the edges or cut it off. Right. And because these are not at what we call the spring line, which is the bottom edge of the cove, if you string the line from the bottom edge to the bottom edge, that's the spring line. The axis, the latitude axis of the machine itself is at the spring line. But you notice that all of these are way below. Yeah. So they're actually projecting upwards, which is why you have that two inch height difference, because then it just matches. It's perfect. Well, can you tell us a little bit more? We talked about the uh, new sign, and that was made by American Mechanical locally. And then this yeah. desk was sourced from the wood shop on Main. Yes, it was. And uh, can you tell us about any of the other things? We know that the Germany is where you have to go for your world class optics, but are there any other <laughs> partners you have as far as uh, local a lot sourcing? Of companies. Um, the desk, by the way, was custom designed um, by the staff, but mostly by Jason Dorfman. The artwork that you saw for the metal signage uh, by Alan Davis. And we all had a part in it, but you know, one person's mainly with uh, that in, in charge of it. Um, the dome is from Astrotech. They're out of, I, I hope I say this right, Illinois, I think. Did they come and, in and install it? Or yes. Did you start it? Oh, no, 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 no. No. Work up and the top and work down. Which um, I think they, well, first they put the framework in. The most important thing is the ring, the base ring. They get that exactly at the right height and centered on the room and perfectly round. Then they put the framework above. Then they do the panels, and they start it from the bottom, and they work it out. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's how they did it. Uh, and then they paint it. And um, it's a special paint in which the uh, holes will not clog. It's a non-clogging paint. The if you get really close, yes, they did. They had a sprayer, but it's a very special process. If you get close, you can see the holes. Oh yeah, well you can see through it up here. You can see a girder up there. Well, I think we're going to um, wrap things up from Bays Mountain Park and Planetarium. Uh, this is Chad Riggs, and thanks, Adam, for your tour. Thank you. Well, we finished the tour. Uh, today's was a little bit unique because of the rain, but it's usually always sunny in Kingsport. Uh, we're here, how we wrap up the event is we have uh, lunch. Uh, it's usually It used to be called the Mayor's Lunch, but the Mayor's been so busy running the city that we're just happy to be out here at Metaview uh, Conference Center and Resort. And uh, this is uh, part of the tour, and we're here with uh, Jeff. Jeff, Jeff, Jeff Hager. Jeff Hager, nice to meet you. And tell us a little bit about the uh, wonderful restaurant here at Metaview. Well, we are a, uh, a three meal a day restaurant. We're open for breakfast every day from uh, six thirty in, until eleven, and then uh, um, serve lunch from about ten thirty to eleven until three. Okay, and then um, we offer a Friday night seafood buffet every Friday night. We do a prime rib on Tuesday, and we've got a great Sunday brunch, uh, which is a big hit with the locals every Sunday from eleven to three. Well, if you haven't been out here, the food's fantastic. It's uh, easy in, easy out, a uh, great deal, and uh, always delicious. So uh, come out and enjoy Metaview. Come on our Move to Kingsport tours, and keep watching Channel 16. From Metaview, this is Chad Riggs.